What is going on? It is Moonfish here. I have a super cool video planned for today, so... Probably should have thought of some more things to say before I turn on the camera. I'm gonna be right back. I am currently joined by my buddy Les, and plan for today, I have a super sick video idea. We're doing the To'au shootout. Basically, all that is, is there's an invasive fish called the To'au here, and they run ravage. They're everywhere. So the goal for the video is just to catch a couple and then show you what to do with them. Uh, a lot of my videos, I'm asking things from you. Go use my code, comment down below, follow, like, sub. This video, I genuinely appreciate every one of you who gives me your time and gives me this platform. So I want to give back a little bit. We're going to give you guys some information and hopefully teach you guys how to catch and cook your own meal. Something like that. My goal is just hopefully I can teach you something by the end of this video. Just so you have something to walk away with. Uh, yeah, with all that being said, it's super simple. I'm going to jump into gear and rigs and all that. I'm going to film absolutely everything as properly as I can. So if you're excited for that, make sure you drop a like. And if you're not already, make sure you're subscribed. I've got tons of fishing content coming, so you're not going to want to miss it. We're going to be one of the fastest growing channels on YouTube here soon. That's about it. Update you on the rigs. Yeah, also, I, uh, as you can see, I'm inside filming my intro. And that is because... It is nighttime right now. These are nocturnal fish, so yeah, I'm kind of all over the place. I, uh, I've never filmed a video like this before, so bear with me. But I'm going to do my absolute best to film everything and try to be as informative as possible. So, you know how hard it is to film when I have some dick like this? <laughs> this? Alright, I'm going to give you a quick gear rundown just so I could show you that anyone can do this. This is nothing special whatsoever. We're just filming it. So, I'll run it through setups real quick. Made in China, so just pen prevail, 10 foot rod. That's like a $20. That's the cheapest Daiwa reel you can get. Cheapest 15 pound test you can get. This is swivel. I have two egg legs tied together, 20 pound test, and a little circle hook. And Les's setup, he's got a, a ugly stick older than me. Little <laughs> Amazon reel with 15 pound test too. And then he's running a little different rig. So mine's gonna be sitting on the bottom like this. See that? Les's rig is going to be more suspended with two hooks, just cause we're trying to. These fish are not very. Uh... I was saying these fish are not very uh, finicky whatsoever. So it does not take much finesse. This is just Les's rig, 30 pound test, little dropper loops, and two B cans, little circle hooks, and then just a little breakaway lead so that if his lead gets stuck, he can pop it off and then just have his fish, not lose everything, you know? Um, yeah, that's the rigs. Super simple, super easy. The bait, nothing special. This is like three month old Ika or squid that you can see there's like dead ants in it and it's all pink and gross. Nothing special whatsoever. Me and Les are just gonna head to the closest body of water we know of and get some baits wet. So see you when we get there. Alrighty, just hit the water. It is not a nice night at all. The tide is a little bit on our side, but the wind and waves are up. So this is just, like I said, anyone can do this. Super easy. So we're not doing anything special whatsoever. It's crappy everything and we're still gonna get it done. And I'm gonna show you all of it and film it. So we actually have to walk across a flat to get to our spot, but ran into this little guy. This is a tohe or a white eel. It's good little bait, but we're not going sliding tonight, so just gonna let him be. Let him be on his way. There's all kinds of fish around the flats, so see if we can spot some critters on the way too. Oh, we do. So we're exploring the flats and on our way here, we've got all these crabs. So I'll pick one up and I'll show you. So this right here, just trying to pinch me. So I'm a crab or uh, I'm not too sure what they call it in English, but they're absolutely littered all over the rocks. Especially, and they're super easy to catch at nighttime. They're one of the quickest things ever in the daytime. They're like little spiders, but at nighttime, they're resting, catch them lacking. So if you ever want to use them as bait, see nighttime, you just sit there, you just grab them. Yeah, more critters along the way. Making our way down, we're about halfway to the spot now, so. See you when we're there. What in the hell is this, Les? 
Is this a bomb? What is it? Oh, umbrella. I was like, what the? Like I said, I'm filming everything, so. So you can do this too. If you want to do this too, make sure you drop a like on the video. You're probably wondering why we're walking down the flats if I told you we're going to the first body of water that I said. So the, the reason being, you see we're on a flat. So we want uh, the deepest little pocket. It's negative tide right now. So if we were to cast on the flat, we would be casting into literally an inch of water. So we're gonna walk down to the nearest little break in the flat where we get like waist deep. That's all you need. Two, three feet of water, waist deep and nighttime. These things come in from afar to feed in the shores. They're uh, invasive fish, so they invade, if you know what I mean. Almost there though. This guy came shooting up in our light. Look at him, he's, he's just in our light. This is a baby Ninui, a rudder fish. That is super cool to see on the flats though. Oh, I'm trying to, I'm losing my bag. He's running away. He's going in this hole. He's just coming and checking us out. It's so cool. Little baby Nanui. Little polka dot fish. That's super cool though. You don't see that too often. That's probably the smallest one I've ever seen. On the flats too. Drop a like if you thought that was cool. Alright. Me and Les are almost done checking to this little break in the flat. All it literally is, is a crack. It's simply just a crack. Nothing more. It's no more than three feet across and two, three feet deep. And that's all it takes to get yourself some dinner and help out your spot a little bit. Beneficial as possible. I'm hoping I provide you with some in information as well as something to do, as well as take some invasives out of my spot, maybe feed a couple people in the way, on the way. You know the saying, feed, give a man a fish, feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish, feed him for a lifetime. Hopefully, that's the kind of connection I can have. All right, just made it down to the spot. As you can see, it's just a little crack. So like we're on the flat and then we keep walking to here and it turns into a little beach. And then this little beach turns back into the flat. Walk over here, you guys can see. So I have not walked down towards the water at all, but it just starts again, you see that? So we're just on this little like sand island and then we're fishing into this little crack in front of me. I'm trying to describe this as best as I can because I know the GoPro doesn't show anything at nighttime. But yeah. What I'm trying to explain with this too is it's just super simple. Three feet of water in front of us, two feet of water, and nighttime. That is all. No special spot. Nothing like it. Yeah, we're gonna bait up. First bait. That's just gonna throw out some this Ika, and like I said, nothing special at all. This Ika is pink. It's literally pink. This has been in my freezer for three months now. So any one of you can do this. If that makes you excited, make sure to drop a like down below. Let's get baited up and let's do the first cast. I'm just gonna show you what I'm gonna do. So as you see, pink Ika right there. Make sure my light is down. I'm doing super simple, just a little piece of Ika or squid, it's old too. Any fisherman knows attention to detail and like fresh bait is super important. But with this fishery, what I'm explaining to you is this is not, not at all. There we go. So I just hooked that on there, turned the hook, hooked it again, just so it stays on a little better. I'm gonna go down here. Rinse the bait off my hands so that my pole doesn't stink because if you have like foam or cork or anything like that and you touch your pole with stinky hands, it'll absorb to that and it's tricky to get it to not stink again. But if you don't care, you don't care. So then all I'm gonna do, come to the water's edge. So you see, right this far from the beach, nothing crazy. We're just gonna go, go cast, spool our entire reel. Guess there's way less line on here than I thought. How's that, Les? Little spool action, never hurt nobody. So I just casted it out. Unfortunately, I do not have that much line on here, but it does not matter. I'm not letting these things fight at all. 
I don't want to be out here. It's not a nice night. So I want to catch these things and go back as quick as possible. Um, with that being said, though, give you a little toe out facts while we're waiting for them to bite. So while I can talk while waiting for a bite is because this is super, super quick fishing, especially when the tide's rising like this and they're all coming onto the flat. Um, so the toe out is an invasive fish. It was brought here in the 1950s so that Hawaii could have a snapper fishery. But unfortunately, they just were super highly competitive and really took over, which sucks. But they still get whacked by the lures. I'm already getting a nibble here. So yeah, just it's that quick. Just leaving your bait out for that long. Already getting some nibbles. It helps to turn off your light, but for the video's sake, I'm going to leave it on. So you see, my line just went slack a bit. So he picked up my lead and swam towards me. I'm just gonna reel up the line, make it tight again. I feel him just eating the bait. Thump, 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 thump. It's a circle hook. So I want him to get it fully. And then I wanna just pull it to the corner of his mouth and get that proper corner set. If you set the hook like a J hook, you'll just pull it right out of his mouth. So you wanna just keep tension, let the rod load up and the rod will set the hook for you, if that makes sense. So you see, just like that. He pulled away from me and then we got him. Oh, this one's not bad, Les. No, it was just pulling hard in the beginning. So you see it pulled the rod away from me and it set the hook just like I was talking about. And then I have pretty heavy line, so I'm just gonna water ski him in as best as I can without letting them pull too much drag. And there we go. Flip them onto the beach. Here we have our invasive snapper. We got our little invasive snapper that I was talking about. And got that little circle hook right in the corner. Just like how I explained, the did its job. Got that corner set just cause we didn't set the hook. We just let the rod load up. So you see that's the ideal hook set that you want. I hope you can see it. I'm gonna move it all over, but yeah. Little snapper, probably about half pound. Oh, oh, oh. Normally, if I wanted to have some fun, I would catch these guys on super ultralight tackle just cause it's one after another. But for today, we're just water skiing them in, trying to commercial fish, get as many out of here as possible. So there you saw it. There's the rig, same piece of little Ika. Just pulled our little snapper out. Of course, if we did this on the cliffs, we would be able to get huge ones and all kinds of stuff like that. But point of this video is working with what we got. So after you got your fish, you want to humanely dispatch him. And since we're going to eat these guys, we're going to bleed him too. Just proper fish care is super important. So I'll show you that real quick. First thing, we're going to put him out of his misery. Don't want him suffering any more than he has to. He is an invasive fish, but he's still a living creature. So brain spike, you're going to go an inch back about from his eye. That's where his brain is located. I go from inside the gills and up towards the head into his brain if that makes sense just because it's more um it's, so he'll give that little kick once you hit the spot you see that he gave his kick he's fully dead now brain spike come over to the water's edge i'm gonna wash all the dust off of him they're very beautiful fish it's a shame that they're um, invasive and detrimental to our reefs so there we go we got our snapper brain spiked he's dispatched now and we're just gonna bleed him all I do to bleed him is there's a membrane in between his gills and his body that has a lot of blood vessels in it you can poke it with a knife or with your finger or anything see all that blood just came out so you see that will bleed him out separate that membrane like gravity bleed them out or you can use the water too because it kind of the blood will clot so we have our towel bled killed and bled out just gonna wash all that blood off so you see those red bits getting drifted in the current that those are the blood clots that i was talking about uh yeah that's one of many so that's what i was talking about and explaining and doing you got one less so you see, it's pretty quick fishing. In the amount of time I filmed this clip, Les has got one as well. So same, same. I'm gonna take his fish, go an inch back from his eye. Swallow the hook. 
No. Oh, he's bleeding. Poor Adam. So you go an inch back from his eye. There you go, he's dead. I'm gonna bleed him. You see all the blood coming out after you separate that membrane. So there we have our bled fish. Both are killed. That's two right there. So we're gonna see how many we can catch. And then once we have our snappers, we'll uh, head back and figure out what we're gonna cook them up with. Dude, this one was like white and just turned gold. It's so sick. Killed them, that's why. So yeah, you can see how these guys could be a problem. So we're benefiting everyone by catching them. I was two in the span of talking, so drop a like for some death. People who know this already, I know I just did so much talking, but please bear with me now. All this yapping is for all the people who don't have someone like me to do this for them. So, uh, yeah, through on that topic, through all that yapping, one bait, I was literally the first bait. So super simple. I'm not going to reuse this bait. You can, but I'm not going to reuse it just because we have so much and I want to use all this old Ika. It's another reason we're filming this video so I can get rid of all this squid that's rotting up my freezer. The goal for this video is I hope a couple people who watch this will go out and do this. Taking these guys out is beneficial to our islands, our reefs, and it also teaches you some fishing skills as well as, like I said earlier, it's a meal. It's a super easy fishery and it's beneficial to a lot of people. So, To'ao. These guys actually have a cousin, the blue line snapper that looks very similar. It's got a yellow body with blue lines going down it and no red tail. So, that's called a Ta'ape. And they're, they're more on the deeper waters. They like to cruise in big, huge clouds like schools that are just massive, hundreds of them. These guys are more on the inside and they're more solitary. You see ones and twos, threes. Sometimes you'll see a big school of them, but normally the bigger ones tend to be more solo. But yeah, that's two down. The span of two minutes. Less is on again. I'm gonna put these guys on a stringer and I think that's enough talking for now. Enough explaining of toals. I'm just gonna rinse and repeat. See how many we can get before we run out of bait. Yep, same, same. It's gonna, nothing special. I'm not even cutting like accurate strips, just a piece. Any piece you can get out of it is good. And we're gonna come over here to our hook. Same, same. It's nothing special. Little circle hook. I, I prefer the circle hook because when you're catching a lot of these guys, eventually one will swallow the hook. And if the first one swallows the hook and the second one swallows the hook, it's lots of wasted time. So that corner set really helps with getting one after another because you can just be a lot more efficient and quicker. So see, hooked up my Ika again. I'm gonna cast it out, talk to you, get another bite. You know what? That's actually good. No need, no need pound them. We go cook these up. Or you wanna fish? I know more line, so I don't care too much to fish. All right. I've decided that this is actually plenty. The point of this video wasn't to pound myself, but to teach you guys how to do it. So we got the three that me and Les caught. More than enough for demonstration. We're not here to feed an army. I'm just here to make a video. I can do something with each one and hopefully that'll give you enough ideas to do it yourself. But I mean, you should be inspired. Like, look. We were down here no longer than, I don't know how long I was yapping for, maybe five, 10 minutes, and we got dinner. We could stay down here and load up. And all we're at, we're at the closest body of water we know of. It's, uh, we're just taking advantage of humans' prior mistakes. That's what all humans do. So, humans introduced towels here, made other fisheries hard, but the towel fishery is good. So you may as well take advantage of it. It's gonna rinse the dust and crap off these guys. Les is gonna try to catch one more. But yeah, we got more than enough. And I wanna try to get this video out tonight ASAP. Trying to post one video a day, but it is the hardest thing in the world to film and edit and post without sleeping and sh crap like that. We're gonna make it happen though. So there we go. Fish dinner, winner, winner, fish for dinner. 80. 
So just got all packed up. I left my rod out while I was packing up. So we'll see if one latched on there. The beauty of the circle hook is it sets itself. So unfortunately we did not get one. It's all right. We got plenty for the video and that's the main goal. And my fisherman instinct kicked in. Me and Les wanted to stay down here and pound it, but we were like, shoot, we can actually get this video out tonight. So I feel like doing it quick is a better message too. It shows you how simple this is and how easy it is for you to do it yourself. These guys, we're gonna check their belly contents and stuff like that. I have a theory. I've had really hard times flats fishing in recent years, and I think it's because these guys have finally taken over. When you look inside the Toal's bellies, it's all the same stuff that the Oeos, Papillos, everything else on the Moys, everything else on the flats is eating, which makes them competition. And when you see how many we're just catching, it should be pretty obvious what I'm getting at here. These guys are eating up all the food, the Oeos are smaller, the Aluas aren't coming on the flats, everything's not as good. So let's do some damage. Let's go team. Drop a like if you want to do some damage on the Toll House. So we got our fish, we got our pole. I dumped the Ika in the water just because I have no use for pink Ika. We, I expected to use a lot more. That was a little too easy. So yeah, we got the fish stringed up. I grab that here. I'm just gonna carry it, I guess. You see? Good times. Grab a less. Grab the pole. Simple as that. Leave no trace. Never that. You, when you go to a spot, you want to make sure no one can ever tell you were there. So, got our rubbish. Got our invasives. Got our poles and all our line tags and gear. Everything possibly could have left. Now we're gonna head back. I'm gonna talk about these guys a little more, do my rants, and then cook them up for you guys. Teamwork. I'm trying to film this. So, as always, plastic bag and steel trash. Don't want that. Anyway, yeah. Future Moonfish coming at you here in my room. I am currently editing this video right now, and I have realized that. This is going to be way too long of a video for a one video thing. So I'm going to make this video two parts. This is just part one. I hope you enjoyed it so far. This is going to be the catching. I want to finish up the rest of the video in part two. We're also going to do some cooking. I have no idea what else we're going to do. In all honesty, Brada Les was supposed to come through and he totally bugged out. I don't know what it was. He left me on scene. So I'm going to talk to him. We're going to figure, get to the bottom of it and see what is up with that. But... That's going to wrap up part one of this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you smash like and subscribe if you're not already. I have so much fishing content planned. My mind is just, I can't wait to do it. I'm super excited to do it. I hope you're excited to watch. Stay tuned for so much more. And yeah, see you in the next one. Shoot!